Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and welcome to another live stream broadcast brought to you by Patriocation and the Eastwood Company, makers of fine automotive tools and equipment. Many of the stuff, uh, the products that we're going to be talking about today and demonstrating with are available from the Eastwood catalog. So keep that in mind. You're going to see links below this broadcast and ways to check prices, features, technical benefits of these types of products. So um, all of this stuff that we're going to be talking about, all these techniques are things that I've picked up over the years in a career as a collision repair technician and a restoration guy. So it all works. It's not the only way, but it's a really good way. So I'm proud to demonstrate some of these techniques for you guys. Um, we're going to be using a variety of different things, some complex shapes, some flat panels, some style lines, all the things that you, um, you run into uh, during the challenge of straightening out panels. Blocking is a universal term, and it's, it's used to describe the process of surfacing, of flattening things out. For instance, check this out. Right here, this represents our substrate, our metal. And it's, of course, it's exaggerated and it's goofy. And here's a coat of primer and here's a coat of primer. What happens when you spray something that's not perfect? Well, it mirrors, it maps and profiles the surface. By blocking, what you're doing is blocking and sanding this down until you've achieved a flat surface. It's just that simple. There is art to it, there is technique to it, and we're going to be talking about a lot of that stuff. So, this, the thing that I love to say is that the secret to a perfect paint job has very little to do with spraying paint. Spraying paint is the reward for doing all the work that it takes to make a paint job, all the body work, all the panel fitment, all the prepping, and, and that's why blocking is so important. Uh, the Paint Education instructional DVDs that focus on blocking are paint your own car and, of course, body panel replacement. We go into surfacers on body panel replacement as well. These are, of course, available at your Eastwood distributors, whether it's in a uh, store in, in the, the showroom in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, or the online store, which a lot of us shop at. So let's look at some of the panels that we're going to be working on. These are panels from a 1934 Packard. There's a lot of different shapes here, a lot of different challenges. One of the biggest challenges with mounting parts and blocking parts off is where do you mount them? Well, this stand is available from Eastwood. This is a great stand. It's modular. You can set it up. I've got a real firm work surface here. So think about one of these stands. You can pick one of those up. I've got a couple of them here. Um, let's talk about blocks. In my mind, there's basically two styles of blocks. You can have the rigid blocks, which are these Dura blocks. They're made of a composite rubber. They're hard. They do flex and they do contour, but they've got a really nice leading edge right here and a nice little handle grip. This is a set of six blocks and they give you a bar of soap. I don't know what they're trying to say. <laughs> Maybe they're trying to say body work is dirty, but there's, there's a, a round block. There's one that's about the width of a paint paddle that can twist and flex. Here's another little guy here. I like these Dura blocks and we're going to show you how to use them. And we have come a long way, folks, from this guy. I remember playing with this as a little kid, thinking it was an alligator with the teeth in there, from my dad's shop. And let's face it, this is old technology. We're not even going to talk about that, even though in a pinch, if you have to have a block, then, uh, then um, it's just one of those things where you might have to improvise. These guys are nice. They're flexible and they can contour to your work surface. I call them hoagie blocks, but that's not the product name. But if you, it's live. You never know what's gonna happen. If you could see these holes here, there are rods that go in place that make this, this bottom foot rigid. As you can see right now, there's a pretty good crown on it. You put the rods in place and that guy gets completely dead flat. So these are a nice alternative as well. What I've really come to appreciate are these soft sanders. They're flexible, they're really lightweight. Uh, don't let the primary colors fool you. There's techniques that we're going to show you with these that make it a really nice tool. The other tool that I don't know if you noticed or not, that we're going to demonstrate, is a vacuum cleaner. I have learned over the years that sanding dust, especially fine powdery blocking dust, well, it's hard to clean out of everything. So I use a vacuum. I show this in the videos, but I use a vacuum to extract the dust and it gives me a really nice clean workshop. And I don't get that stuff up in my nose. Speaking of in my nose, let's talk about safety. 
there's not a whole lot of safety involved in, in blocking panels. You want to make sure you don't touch the metal edges. That's just common sense stuff. Um, the dust filter masks. Get one like these guys with the metal strips that can contour to your nose and get a good seal on your face. With the polyester surfacers that we're going to be focusing on mostly, um, there's a short cure time with them. There's no isocyanates. But if you're using something like a gray 2K urethane primer, then you have to remember that there's a 90-day cure time, just like on your urethane paints. 90 days from mixing until it's finally cured. So those isocyanates are active for 90 days. So if you have allergies or anything like that to ISOs or if you're sensitive to them, you, you want to keep uh, aware of that and don't get it in your respiratory system. So very important if you're using uh, 2Ks uh, and urethanes to make sure that you're, that you're being proactive when it comes to safety. So let's talk about primers. Primer, it's a big giant word and it means many, many different things. You've got epoxy primers, you've got polysurfacers, you've got 2Ks, you've got wash primers, you've got acid etch primers, there's all kinds of primers. What we're talking about for the purpose of blocking is a high build polyester primer or a high build 2K urethane primer. There's a lot of different ways to get that product. One of the coolest ways to come around in the last little while are these 2K aerospray cans. Eastwood now has these in black and gray. Basically what this is, if you haven't been introduced to this product before, is you've got a button in the top and you put it on the bottom, you break the membrane, it releases a catalyst into this can. And now you've got a rattle can professional 2K product. For small parts, it's great. It's a small orifice, so you're not going to have a whole lot of, of big fat build and you're going to burn a couple of them up if you're using big panels. But if you're detailing stuff, axles, drive shafts, uh, engine brackets, things like that, a dashboard, and you want to break out some 2K and get a nice high build primer, that's a good, good method, good way to go. Jaded has a lot of this. This is a gray primer. It's catalyzed, of course, and there are reducers if you need them. So this is a very nice alternative. You want to be careful about stacking urethane gray primer up too much. When I was in collision repair, we used to have problems with it. Past three or four coats, it starts to stack and it starts to trap solvents. And like I said, there's a 90-day cure window with the urethane primer surfacers. So while it's curing, guess what it's doing? It's shrinking. So it's a nice product, but it's not intended to be stacked up so high that you surface it down and laser straight a panel. That's where polys come in. The Contour Polyester Primer Surface is one of the nicest products that I've found in a long, long time. It almost doesn't shrink at all. It's extremely high build, and uh, it, it's just a fantastic product. And if you've seen the jaded car, which is behind us here, it's probably gone through four or five sessions of blocking, and it's mostly poly. We've got some 2K urethane on top just to make it nice and easier to sand. But uh, there's, there's about, I'd say, three to four sessions of blocking and, and repriming on jaded to get it as nice and straight as it is. And that car is straight. I'm very proud of the body work that I did and my friends did on that car. So, spraying primer. You need a spray gun, except for the 2K Aerospray, it's its own spray gun. So with your, your 2K uh, gray urethanes, 1.6, that's a little on the small side, 1.8 is probably, um, probably a good fluid tip size to spray. Even though you can spray with a 1.4, 1 1.6 1 to 1.8, that's your range of fluid tip or the orifice size in your spray gun. And make sure you've got a lot of CFM because you want to make sure and break those particles up. It's a fat, thick product. you got to atomize it. However, with the polys, they're very, very thick. There's no reducer with that. It's the catalyst and the poly surfacer itself. If you have a small gun, you can dob a little bit of acetone in there and it will thin it down, but it, it sacrifices the build of the product. So I recommend at least a 2.0 orifice. Uh, the good thing about that is that you, you, you might be thinking, well, where do I get that exotic spray gun? Well, the Eastwood Evolution spray gun uh, is, is a very cost-effective spray gun. They've got sales on them all the time, way less than 100 bucks, and you can get a variety of different tips. And they offer a 2.0 fluid tip. The, the Evolution is what I primed most of the panels with shaded on. It works great. So use a big fat orifice when you're talking about polys. There's some other products we're going to talk about as well. There's a dry guide coat, and Eastwood has wet guide coats in different colors. A guide coat is a contrasting color. We're going to drag this panel because it's the first guy we're going to work on. And by the way, I want to mention, we 
through, <laughs> through the kindness of Verizon Wireless, we're going to be able to answer your questions, those of you who are logged in. So please feel free to send your questions into the guys at Eastwood. They're going to transfer them to me down here in Tennessee, and we will do our best to answer all of your questions. We're going to leave some space at the end of the demo, but if you've got something you want to ask me while we're doing this, hey, ask away. And uh, they'll either write the questions down so we can address them later or ask on the fly. So we have a guide code here. This is the Eastwood spray guide coat and it is black contrast in color light gray surfacer black guide coat that's what you want and what you, you want to be able to expose the low spots and this sits on all of it and the demo that we had showing you the profiled metal and everything like that this uh, this will sit inside and expose the low spots because they'll still have the paint in them I'll show you we're gonna use this guy While I'm loading up my block, I want to talk about the difference between, wow. Okay, I'm live. I guess we got a question. Oh, okay. Again, this is live. We're going to uh, see if we can pick back up the, uh, the video. Okay. Okay, hang in there, folks. We're uh, we're working on this. Okay, you should have video back again. Okay, I've got it on my screen. Okay. It's a little bit of lag time with this internet broadcast, people, so just kind of hang in there. Okay. 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 Yeah, I've got to stop broadcasting and then reset. I can't change on the fly, so I'm going to go down for a second. Broadcast settings. We're going to go to a medium bandwidth, and we hit OK. Yeah. Okay, so um, I've got, uh, okay, we should be broadcasting now. They want to what? <laughs> yeah, this is not radio, is it? Okay, have you, have you got pictures yet? Okay, all right. Again, sorry about that, folks. We had a little bit of a glitch in our, in our transmission and our broadcast, but, uh, but we're back. All right, so what I was saying is that there's a very defined line between shaping and between shaping and sanding. Shaping, in my mind, and with my methods and my techniques, stops at 220 grit. 220 and below is for shaping. 220, 300 and above is for sanding and for prep. So what we're talking about with blocking is shaping. It's the next step and the final step of your body work. So keep that in mind. 220 and below shaping, 220 and above is surface prep. And there is some, some gray area right at the middle of those grits, but that's pretty much the rule of thumb. What we're using right now is 120. 120 is very aggressive. I'm not sanding, I'm shaping. So what I'm gonna do is surface this down with 120, 
Sometimes I'll start with 80, depending on the substrate, depending on what I'm working on and how straight I want it and how many sessions that I've pre-planned that are uh, necessary to straighten this panel out. But for now, we're going to start with 120. 120 is pretty aggressive. This is first prime on these panels. It's a 1934 Packard and it wasn't perfect. It's had a lot of uh, chance to get the corners rounded off and have a lot of pop knots in it. So. Um, we don't know what we're going to find. Basic blocking technique, you want to make an X. It's a cross blocking pattern. I'll show, flip the block over. We're here and we're making an X. And we travel and we make an X. And we travel a little bit more and we make an X. And I'm progressing as I'm making this X. And I'm progressing as I'm making this X. Let's do it with the sandpaper. traveling and I'm traveling again. I don't know if you can notice or not, I'm bracing the panel with my gut and it ain't pretty but it holds it still a little bit. So what have we done? Not much. So we're going to go a little more aggressively. See how I'm traveling. I'm not sanding in a linear format, not like this at all. I'm using the leading edge of my block you can even see the pattern on the back side of the paper. I'm using the leading edge of my block to travel the panel. I'm blocking and traveling. We're going to hit it again. All right, let's stop and take a look. The beauty of a guide code is that you can monitor your progress. You can see what you're doing. However, here's where the vacuum comes in handy. Let's get rid of that dust. Here is a beautiful demonstration of what a guide code does you can see the light spots and the dark spots. That's not the overspray, that is, the light spots are high spots, the dark spots are low spots. If you guys know this already, you understand that it's nice to brush up on fundamentals. If you don't know this already, here's a clear demonstration as to why it's so, so critical and so important to use a guide coat. And basically that's, that's in essence what blocking is. Now, not every car is flat. Not every panel is flat. There's very few panels that are flat. So you're going to have areas and contours and things like that to deal with. So I'm going to show you basically how to use a rigid block and go around a corner. I'm going to use a different size block. And load it up. Check out the scissors. They're cheap. You go to a hobby store, you get a pair of scissors. It's going to kill the blade, but you can have a nice, precise end, and just keep them dedicated. So, what what I don't want to do is this is a hard, it's a hard block. I don't want to make grooves, and I want to accentuate this contour and make it true. So, what I'm going to do is block around, and now I'm traveling over, and I'm still using my other pattern. It's a diagonal pattern, and I'm traveling over the edge. The key to not grooving out your panel is keeping it moving with the rigid blocks anyway. Because I can't sand like this and then work my way down. It's not going to help. It's not going to. It's not going to recreate the shape that I want. And you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm watching, and I'm blocking, and I'm looking. A little bit more. And I've hit my filler. Now, a couple of different philosophies here. Polyester primer surfacer and polyester filler. It's kind of one and the same. They cross link, they lock, but this is like hitting metal to me. It's a different consistency and it's going to dig out as a potential of that grooving out just a little bit. So when I hit filler, when I hit metal, then it's time to stop. Then I know that I've blocked to the extent that uh, that uh, that my primer has built up too. So it's almost time to stop blocking that edge. 
Along with the guide code, there is a beautiful, beautiful visual aid that I want to show you. Um, here's another thing. <sighs> Microfiber, yes, they're fine, fine polishing rags, but they will also, they'll pick up that talc. And when you wipe a panel down, stays in the microfiber. These are washable. Every time you wash them, the fibers expand. They get better and better and better. Don't polish your car with this, but keep one of these in your body shop. Now, what I'm talking about is a, it, it's, it's, I call it wet checking, wet checking. Uh, Pre-painting prep works great for this. It comes in a quart form as well as uh, the spray cans for little small jobs. I like to buy it in the quart form and spray it on my panel. This is a pressurized sprayer. It's a real simple operation. You charge it, it's got a Schrader valve on it. You charge it with air and it allows you to do this. 